What's going on everybody? My name is Ben and welcome back to the channel for a brand new video announcement. We are jumping in on a new group build called the NATO vs Warsaw Pact group build. Started on June 10th, it's going to go all the way to October 27th, being hosted by the group build group over on Facebook. We're going to go ahead and jump right on in with this. This is a 148 scale Su-15 Flagon A. It's one of those aircraft that I've always wanted to build. It's made by Trumpeter, so it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of goes together. And I, for one, am very excited to go ahead, dive in, see what I can do. Now, the group build is going from June the 10th all the way till October 27th. So we have plenty of time to go ahead and jump in and get this thing finished up. So I thought we would open the box and take a look at what we have inside. Recently, I just haven't really been into model building. There's been a lot of things going on in my personal life and I just haven't really had that mojo to jump back on the bench. So I'm gonna go ahead and try a brand new kit and jump in on something that's gonna be kind of fun and different. I've always been a big fan of Cold War aircraft and well, Russian aircraft are some of my favorites. So this should be a lot of fun. So we're gonna go ahead and check out the decals first, see how they look. And I can already say that, well, they look decent. We are only given one color scheme. It's going to be a natural metal color scheme with, I believe it is a green nose cone. We also have either a black or a very dark anti-glare panel that comes off the front of the bubble canopy. We actually only have enough decals to make one particular SU-15, but that's okay. We're going to do some more research and we'll figure out if that's actually correct. Now moving over to the instructions. These are fairly simple instructions. I don't really see anything too crazy. Start off on the cockpit, work our way down to the fuselage. We have our intake trunkings that we go ahead and build. Then moving over to the other side, we've got what well, looks like our wings and our fuselage and then our engines and our burner cans. So really there's nothing too crazy here. Now this is the original Su-15 Flagon. This is the full Delta wings. Later versions like the TM and the UM, some of them actually had a modified Delta wing with a slight kick out at the very end. But this is the original pure Delta wing Su-15. Now when it comes to weapons, I'm not really sure if these are correct, but we are given a couple of different versions of missiles and we have some air to air missiles and some drop tanks. Now I know for a fact that we actually have gun pods in this kit as well because the Su-15 was designed during that era where we just didn't put guns on a lot of jets. So they actually would install gun pods and I'm pretty sure that this kit comes equipped with gun pods as well. Now one of the things the Su-15 was known for was its gigantic radar. That's what gives it that very large bulbous pointed nose. It's got a very powerful radar right there in the front of it. Now we can actually build the entire radar assembly. It shows down here here that we can actually pose it open kind of kinked off to the side that I'm pretty sure is not correct I don't think that you could do that with these noses I'm not entirely certain but I think I read somewhere that you'd have to take the entire nose cone off and set it aside to go ahead and get to the radar but that's about it really everything else looks fairly simple I don't see any real issues with it we again just have the one color scheme nothing too fancy there so those are the instructions let's move on to the plastic now the plastic parts themselves look to be very nicely molded. I don't really notice any flash. Everything looks to be finely recessed and it looks like we do have some details in the wheel wells, which are nice, but I'm not really sure how accurate a lot of these panel lines are. I've heard that the trumpeter kits are actually a little bit inaccurate when it comes to the panel lines and they actually don't line up between the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing. I'm not sure if that's true. That's just what I've read. One thing I will show you here, this is the nose cone. And as you can see, it is a gigantic nose cone. It's gotta be large anyway to hold that giant radar up there but still I've never really seen any nose cone that's this pointy and this large so this is going to be interesting to see how this works. For the cockpit I've noticed that there's not a lot of detail in here and they do sell resin kits and PE update kits that we could buy for this but I really don't want to spend any money. The chair also looks a little bit under detailed so I'm hoping I can go ahead and do some scratch building. The instrument panel as well looks to be decent enough. We do have a very large radar scope that kind of sticks out on the top of that. So we got to make sure that that's here in the kit. If not, we might have to scratch build it. I want to go ahead and really make sure that I have most of the prominent details like that radar scope. And as far as we have that, I'm pretty sure we should be good to go. Also, I've noticed here on the back of the fuselage, right behind the canopy, we have this very large round dome. And I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think this is as prominent on the real aircraft as it is here in the model. We might have to go ahead and do some accuracy checks against my references. Now, when we talk about the weapons here on the Su-15, we are given a choice of a couple of missiles and some drop tanks, and that looks to be you know, pretty similar to what we see in some of the references. But one thing I do want to go ahead and change out are these drop tanks. Instead, I want to go ahead and replace the drop tanks with these. Now, these are gun pods. They carry two cannons right there in each of the gun pods. So there's, I think, four cannons all together, and they look really, really cool. And I'd like to go ahead and use those instead of those drop tanks. So that's my one plan is I really want to go ahead and drop the drop tanks and I want to put on those gun pods. I think that's going to be really kind of cool. 
Plus with the missiles and all that, we should be looking pretty mean. A lot of the early SU-15s I've seen don't have these small air-to-air -air missiles. They only have the larger missiles and they typically have those gun pods. So all in all, this kit looks like it's going to be an interesting build. It's going to be natural metal, so that's going to be fun. I haven't really built a lot of natural metal. The last one I did was the FJ-2 Fury, and that I think turned out decently. So I think this is going to be along the same lines using very similar techniques. So that's going to be pretty fun. Though I do have to say we need some references. Now I don't have a lot of references for the SU-15. I was able to scrounge up one book though, so I did pick it up, and that's going to be kind of like our SU-15 Bible for this entire build. I plan on using this book right here. This is going to be one of those builds I think I really, really need references, and I don't know too much about the SU-15, so this book's going to really, really help me out. Now, the nice thing about this book is it covers a ton of information. We have everything from line drawings to side color profiles. We have a whole section on the model kits themselves, then all the developmental history of the SU-15, all the way from the very early pure Delta Wing SU-15s to the later two-seat UM versions. So we have a lot of information, great color pictures, as well as black and white pictures. This is going to be a wonderful reference to go ahead and use when we're building out our little SU-15. Just giving you a close up here as we can see a beautiful black and white photo of an SU-15 and we can see very clearly we've got the two larger missiles and we've got the gun pods right there on the center pylon. So I think there is enough significant proof to go ahead and say that we can put whatever we want in terms of gun pods or drop tanks and I want to go ahead and rock the gun pods. Another really great reference here for cockpit detail we've got pictures of both the TM version and also the original flag and A version. So that's really, really nice. We can see the detail and the differences between the instrument panels and the internal cockpit. That's gonna be really, really helpful. And of course, in the back of the book, we have our color profiles, all of these side profile shots and drawings of all the different types of SU-15s with different markings. Majority of them, of course, will be that natural metal with that green nose, but we'd have some camouflage, which may not be fun to try later on in the future, but we have a lot of good information here, and this book should be a big help. Now, lastly, let's talk a little bit about paint. This is a natural metal finished aircraft, and I'm going to be using a similar technique as I use with my FJ-2 Fury. So we're going to go ahead and rely a lot on all clad. So we're going to start out with just aircraft frame aluminum. We're going to get some aluminum. We're going to try different combinations, different types of metalized colors. Now, I also picked up some of these Model Masters metalizer colors. Now, these were my original go-to modeling type metalized paints. So I'm going to use those for, I think, more along the lines of accent colors and maybe some shifts in panels. I, of course, also have my Vallejo colors, and those worked out really well last time, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use them this time around. We'll have to see how it all kind of goes down. But along with the Vallejo colors, the Metalizer colors by Model Masters, and then, of course, the Metal colors by Allclad, I think we're going to have a really nice assortment of metalized paints, so that should give it a cool look. Now, like on our FJ2, we're going to be using the Allclad Gloss Black Base. This is going to be perfect. Also using some colors like this Jet Exhaust, and then, of course, our Tried and True Chrome that we used last time. We should be able to achieve a very interesting natural metal look. Natural metal is always kind of difficult to do and I've only really done it one time very successfully so let's hope fingers crossed I can really do this one justice now you also notice that there is a green nose cone here on most of the SU-15s and I did pick up some green color that I think will work beautifully for that this is mission models tractor green and it's very very similar to what I see in the images we can see right here with this color image there you go the green wheel hub we've got that green nose and we got a green flash here on the tail. So I think this is a really good color and it should match up well. I also have that emerald green for the cockpit color, also by Mission Models, so I think I'm pretty well stacked for paint. But we're gonna go ahead and call it quits for today, guys. I wanted to give you a look at what I will be building for the NATO versus Warsaw Pact group build, and I am super excited to go ahead and toss my hat in the ring and see what I can do. So until our next episode, thank you so much for hanging in there and being patient. You know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on the next episode of the SU-15, the NATO versus Warsaw Pact group build. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.